Hey, I'm Kev Kem, and welcome back to MotoGP 18, where Mayo got a decent result in Spain, but pace was very disappointing. Let's see if we can be more on the pace around the Bugatti circuit in the Mon in France. So here goes Mayo for the first of three possible qualifying laps. So all trying to chase down Alex Marcus is 35.6, and he's getting a sit stream off his teammate, Bernardi, heading into the first chicane. Hopefully the turn doesn't interfere with Mario's lap, then being so close. But Mario should be able to pull away. It'd be a good indicator, actually, if he's beating his teammate. The bank is 4,000 up on Marcus, and now here comes Fanati have a little look. Maybe he doesn't understand the team in game, so if you're giving slip shoot to your teammate, you back off then. Then you make make room for yourself to have a good qualifying but instead Fanati wants to battle in qualifying there's half a second gap between Mario and Marquez and you can put most of that on Fanati look at this handlebar to handlebar in qualifying this isn't a race Romano what are you doing It's now McDonald seven tenths back. With the 35-6. So he's aiming for 36 at the moment. It shows that Fanatio says decent pace, maybe top 10 pace. If he's keeping up with Mayo, who makes a Horlix of the final chicane. As he rejoined the old famous circuit de la Sarf layout. It's still a 36-6, so it's a second off the pace. We're gonna get down in 13. So he's got to be looking at 35s and to be competitive, Mario. In his qualifying session. And he's wide in the first chicane. Messy. Very messy beginning. But he's up, apparently. 600s up. On Marquez. So take that. Looks like Fanati has finally slowed down. He's backed off. Only took him a like, like a lap to get that message. And now you're losing again in that second set to three tenths. Or not, there's Mano. Was running into the back of his teammate. And now getting the slit stream off Mahayo. As you go over the curves. Bit dodgily. But he sits tense behind Marquez. It's a new personal best for Mario. Or is it a top 10 lap? I'm not sure it is. And then he did mess up these couple of corners. Previously, he's run a bit wide. It was not as bad. And it's a 36-4. It's slightly better. It's up to 12. But on this final lap, he's got to get into the 35s. He wants to be right up there. And he's at least nailed the chicane. As Olivier sets the new fastest out. 35-6 still. For Mario. Once again, red in that first sector. So he's going to be very good in that first chicane, maybe. And then this is the sector where he seems to struggle. And you can see he's struggling to get on the power. Out of that left-hander. There's not a personal best. Not a good sector at all. We've gone the back straight though. This is where he's fighting with Fanati, so he should have gained back some time in this sector compared to his previous lap. Oh, we say that he's outbraked himself. He's messed up, Mario. Invaded lap. He's got time for one more though. Does he have any tyres left? Has he rubbed off the sheen of them now? We'll see. 
As he's made slight setup changes to the bike as well to help it get through the corners. Seems to be working a bit here. And see again, eight tenths down. Swipe that mistake. But it shows you could get maybe up to half a second back. Definitely got that in the bag. So once again, there in that first chicane. Not as well as before, though. Apparently, he's 4,000 slower. And the Vieira. So he's lost around 600. Well, he's smoother getting on the power through the left hander. So it should be a better middle set to know. Still around half a second back. As it go down this back straight. Got half a lap to go. Can Mayo put it out in these final couple of sectors? Oh, he's out breaks himself into the chicane. He's not going to happen. Nine tenths down. Just does not have the tyre up. Prove his lap time. As everyone's pitting in front, so at least he's got a clear run for his last couple of corners. It's a good run out of the final corner, but it's not good enough. As Olivier's just on par ahead of Marcus and Bagnaya with Baldassari in the second ahead of Mir and Binder. It's Vergay ahead of his teammate Sharotta and Pacini on the third row. It's Ika leading the fourth row ahead of Navarro and Mario, who just misses out in the top ten in qualifying by a tenth of a second. But decent, it's better than a res at least. Then we've got Marini, Lowe's and Fanati on the fifth row, so he just out qualifies his teammate by a couple of tenths. Then you've got Hector Barber ahead of Agata and Vinales. Then it's Danny Kent alongside teammate Cortuaro on the seventh row. And tech free of Remy Garden in Ardendale. The top NTS bike ahead of Corsi. And Locatelli then bench Snyder ahead of Joe Roberts, the other NTS bike, and Manzi. And looking at the rest of the grids, Paoli, Granado, and Corradin. And then on the back row, it is Fugadini, Danilo, and Nakashima. So let's see if Mario can grab a top 10 finish here and not get out dragged to the line. So here's Mario revving up at the start, waiting for the lights to go out in France for another eight that race. As in this like his teammates got the jump on him. So did hit the barbo or try to, at least the Spaniard. As he go into the right hander. Oh, sneaks back by his teammate. We make moves into the chicane. Everyone's bundled up. McDonald up into eighth. Fantastic start. He's on the outside of Miguel Oliveira, who hasn't had a good start, though. It's the KTM man. Another force rise alongside the Grassini now of Jorge Navarro. Oh, and Binder wants to make a move. Making it three wide as the South African. Very ambitious. And they're opening that. Samuel's down in 21st. Benati just outside the top 10. Where are you going, Mario? Seems like you're going into your teammate, apparently. So he's all that work at the start, and he's back down to 12 now. Or not, his teammate seems to have backed off. Need to go into the chicane. Mario looking to make the move on Orge Navarro. He does it. Now he's down the inside of Binder and Vergate. Into the right hand and wants to catch back up to this elite group of seven. Looks like he's doing it at the end of this lap as Binder pushes his way, forces his way through in the final corner. We'll give you that one this time, Brad. He's probably saying under his helmet. Smiles. Marcus Lee's head of Baldur's eye in Oliviera. Remember, Mario, very strong in this first sector in qualifying. And he's up into eighth again. Now, can he keep it tight enough that he keeps Binder behind? He does. 
Now let's see if he's got the pace for the top seven and like what he had in Spain. Spinder tries to make a move with a hairpin. Actually pushing him through that corner. He's got Cortro and Navarro battling for 11th. McDonald again forced wide by this time by Binder and Verge. As they get together on this back straight, here comes McDonald to make it free wide. He's got the inside into the left. Can he hold it through the right? He can. Should my want to look at that, but let's say race on for the time being. And on Danny Kent down. And his speed up having a horrible season, the Brit already. He's going to the last couple of corners, but they're definitely catching up to the riders in front. And this time, no binder to dive down his inside, going across the line, does a 35 8. Where was that in qualifying? As he does the fastest lap. Man, may be wondering the same thing as well. Didn't like close to achieving that. But it seems like in race trim again, he's coming alive. So go downhill through the right. Oh, a bit too much curb on the exit, maybe. Sam Lowe's down the 25th now. What is happening to the brick? As Mayer makes the move on Pacini, but Donald trying to catch up, and now Binder wants a taste of the action. No, oh, this time holding the inside. Which means he's blocked off Binder on the exit. He's learning. Going on his back straight. They might have the slip stream, no. They can't do anything into the chicane. That's out of the right hand. Uh, McDonald, less than half a second behind this battling lot in front. And this is for fourth. Oh, this is a little look at Pacini. Through the left hand. He's trying to block Mir from overtaking him on the other side. As McDonald does a 36-3 this time, half a second slower. Well, Baldessari takes his fastest lap, so he takes the lead of the Marquez and the Vieira. There you go, Maya, just easing it into the chicane. That's much better. Oh, he's got a much better exit as well than Mir and Pacini. Not quite close enough to make the move down the inside of the Italian. As Binder looks to make a move as well on McDonald as they've caught up to this quartet, battling for fourth. That's Venati down in 17, battling with Vinar. There's a point being the points, Romano. Obviously dropping back. That's Mo having to defend from Binder, but he's been pushed wide by the South African. And now Verge's through as well. Just can't keep Binder down. But you can try and overtake him again as Mayo is about to do that. Into the right hander. Oh, and Dominic Agat's her down. And now he makes the move on Pacini into the left hander. Time runs wide. So now Mayo's got at least a buffer between him and Binder. He gets out the final corner into the second half of this race. He's in a good battle for the top five. Get his first top five of the season. His first top five in Moto2 as they go three wide in front. Mayo tries to find the cap. With Mir. Oh, Mir almost wipes him out. It's Mayo's up to fifth now. And struggling to hold off Binder, he's now battling with Sharotta for fourth. What a different almost a lap makes.
As me is battling with Binder now for seventh. Danny Kemp battling for last again. As here goes, it's that Peko Bagnaya down the inside of Mayo. It almost loses it, getting on the power as Binder forces his way through again. He's going to be sick of seeing that KTM after this race. As he dives down the inside of Pasini. Did he take down the Italian? As he rubs it with Binder. May on the warpath. Now down the inside of Bagnaya into the left. Really leaning on Bagnaya. As they go for the right. Oh, and Binder wants more of the... As Mayo rejoins down in 30 behind Pasini. Ahead of Gardner. Oh, what could have been for Mayo? This time pushed out by Binder. That was always going to happen with the South African in this race. And it finally did. But Mayo still set for points. Still ahead of his teammate. Let's see what he can do. Well, he can run wide. That's always a treat. And the tyres are in good nick, so he should be able to push the remainder of the race. As he tries to catch up to Pasini, he's trying to catch up to Santos Navarro. Suka Marini down in 25th. As once again, Mayo wide in that corner, that was Remy Gardner through. He really has been shaken by. Binder. Now here comes Locatelli. He's going to be out the point soon. As he just dives on Gardner. Gardner fights back. It's like, what are you doing, you idiot? No surprise. And McDonald gets right back past Binder. Past Gardner, should I say. He wishes on Binder. But Binder said no. Multiple times. And he's in the top five behind Shirotu. We've got Marcus, Baldessari and Olivier, your top three. And 1.7 seconds is the gap in front. And so on the penultimate lap, Mayo looking to catch up to the veteran Pacini. He's been in this class so long. It's 250 guys in Moto2 form as well. He's been in MotoGP. And on very wide there. He's got no grip in the tyres, even though it looks like he does. The bottom right, there's no grip at all. This is why you're seeing him all over the place. Can't get the power down, can't get it stopped now. Ever since he went into that gravel. Wonder if Binder's damaged something. Else. No, now his teammates attacking him. And he's out of the points. No, he's got no straight line speed. Is the bike damaged after that? As Binder's now in fourth. Oh, and Jorge Navarro goes down from in front. Oh, and everyone's going down in front. What is going on? Is that Remy Gardner? Oh, McDonald gets into Navarro. Gets, tries to get ahead of Corturari. He's up into 12 somehow. Made that 11th as he's down the inside the Frenchman on home turf. Oh, and Cortero went down. Has he got Arden down the NTS behind? Got Navarro in front in 11th. Strange things happening again. There's someone the final lap in France. And look at that. Just so much more confidence through the corner. McDonald slips down the inside of Navarro and unfortunately sipped wide. But we're able to cut back and get him on the exit. That's what he's trying to do. Iron up that inside. 
Through the left. Oh, he's all over the curves. That's a bit messy, Mario. Let's see if he can hold it through this double right. And maybe slipstream down the back straight. No, he hasn't got the exit as Ollendale's battling with Hector Barber. And Fanati did go down after a clash with his teammate. Oh, Mario. Do you not want to get Fanati on your wrong side? Has Binder still battling for fourth with Sharotta? We're going to the final set to Mario, desperately diving for 11th. Making all over the back of Navarro as Olivia wins again. Looks like Mario's going to have to settle for 12th. After a race that looks so promising for a top five, it's disappointment once again. After multiple clashes with Binder and other riders as well. So Olivia wins again, this time ahead of Baldassare by two thirds of a second, then Marcus in third. His teammate Binder in fourth after a very tough race ahead of Shurota. Then we've got Bagnaya in sixth ahead of Verge, Mayor Pasini. Eco with another top 10. He survived the chaos well, does that kid. Then you've got Navarro McDonald in 12, despite being on the pace. Even a fastest up faster than Oliveira. But just did not get the result once again. Odin Dahl, man of the race, probably. In 13th on the NTS. Fantastic job from the South African Edda Barbera. And Vinayas Pauli just missing out on a point along with Joe Roberts, who's just 9,000th of a second behind the Malaysian across the line. Got Ben Snyder in 20th. Cortorado Home Hero in 21st, with Danilo in 28th as well. And Luca Marini in last. So in the Riders' Championship, it's a 36-point lead for Olivia ahead of Alex Marquez. He's 15 points ahead of Baldessari, who's 11 points ahead of Verge. And you've got Bagnai in 5th, Schwarzer ahead of Pasini in tip. Binder right there in 8th. Then Mir, Ika rounds out the top 10 ahead of Navarro and McDonald. And you've got those in 13th, also in double figures. You've got Hector Barber up to 19th ahead of Corsi. Odin Dover's first points of the season up to 21st ahead of Vinardis. That's 22 riders have scored points so far this season. Now Jules Dinello is getting a wooden spoon. So for Mario, once again, the reputation has gone down. He's not getting many development points either for his team. As you scroll back and see his riding positions up to 75 at least for throttle management and riding position and in 76 for brakes management, 77 for lean angle. As Mark Marquez is also on the streak, winning in France ahead of Dovi and Rossi. In Moto3, it was Jorge Martin ahead of Bezeki and Bastianini. So for Mario, it's not the start to the season he would have wanted after Qatar. He's just been caught up in incidents in America, now in France as well. Didn't have the pace in Spain. What will happen? In Magello, where he's won before in the Red Bull Rookies Cup in Moto3. Can he do it in Moto2 out of nowhere? It looks like because he's got the pace, but he just needs to get a clean race together. South watching and find out if he does next time.